my love of the Essex landscape has developed over the years, particularly from working on Thames sailing barges and um, discovering all the wonderful marsh plants and the bird life that uh, comes to feed on the salt marshes um, has been um, a very enriching thing in my life. Uh, firstly, I'll show you my cameras, um, which I've been using over the last 30 years or more. This is my first best camera I had when I was an art student, the Hasselblad 500, which is with the normal 80 millimeter lens on it, which takes the big square two and a quarter negative. And so I was using this when I went up into the aeroplanes, um, probably about 10, 12 years ago. And so I, I went up about six times, seven times, um, in a very small two-seater plane called a Piper Cub. And I was allowed to have the door wide open so that I could lean out and we banked or tilted right over so that I could take shots which looked down, for which I needed this view, viewfinder here, um, this eye viewfinder, so you can look down like that. And sensibly it has backs which you can take off so I had two or three of these pre-loaded because you, there's no way you can load and reload a camera when you're flying in very cramped conditions. So I had these to just slot on like that and then shot most of what you see in the exhibition on that camera. Uh, this was the other camera I used a bit later on, which is a wonderful landscape format camera another Hasselblad, Hasselblad the Panex camera and or the X-Pan rather <laughs> and this um, has got a wonderful lens and always I take uh, put uh, orange filters on the lenses so that you get maximum contrast um, because that's what I'm after the great drama of the um, black and white rich tones of the lands, the textures and the sculptural forms that reveal themselves. Um, so I'll show you some of my prints, shall I? The, this image, um, which is very difficult to know which way up it is, in fact, it could be any way up, but um, I call this uh, fractal fern unfurling, um, partly because it reminds me of a, a one of those beautiful fern fronds as it's unraveling in the spring. And it's a, a wonderfully sort of tight spiraling form. And uh, I, think it's, I think it's a great image actually. This is, this is a favorite image, um, partly because it's so natural there's not any man-made structure here. It's totally natural formation of a shell beach. So this would be cockles, mussels, and all sorts of ground up shells which have made a sa the sand on this spit. And um, it struck me how, how very similar to a fetus this looks, the whole shape is a fetal form really. And this is the, the sea ebbing in and out here. Um, and the deposits, are, in fact, there are tiny, tiny little footprints of someone walking on the beach. And there I see the shadow of a person right there. Um, but I, I think it's quite a pleasing, pleasing image. This comes out differently every time I print it because it depends very much on dodging and burning because this is a very bright area and then you've got very dark areas here. So it takes a lot of control and manipulation with the hands under the enlarger in the darkroom. Working in black and white, um, you're able to, and particularly printing your own photographs in the darkroom, you're able to really enhance 
the um, qualities that you, you want to show um, in the textures and the forms, the chiaroscuro, the very light and dark. It's almost like you're painting with the light, so you're sculpting it really. Um, and you're shining the light onto that area whilst you're holding back um, the dark areas um, so that you want as much detail from that negative as possible to show. Sometimes the exposures will take about half an hour um, and lots of dodging and burning and then it goes into the developer and the stop and fix baths and then it needs washing for about two hours, two to three hours. There's nothing better than walking along that shoreline with your binoculars, um, enjoying watching those wonderful creatures. <laughs>